Hi everyone, I've noticed there's been um, quite a few um, people asking about this new feature which is um, on the Rebel ECs, which is um, this estimated compression pressure function in ignition mode type. Um, it was only released in the um, in the Nexus Rebel LS um, initial firmware, and it's used in base maps for the Rebel ECs. Um, and I thought I would explain why it's there and how it works. Um, so the first thing I'll say why it's there, um, and that is that in the um, the original idea of the Rebel EC was that a person could, uh, Richard's dad, who I've never met Richard's dad, but apparently he doesn't tune, um, can go and get his junkyard LS engine and um, answer some questions about it with, with the ECU, plug it all in and have it go boom and work. Um, and with the LS ECs, so with the um, LS engines, we're trying to cover a range of about 35 different engines going from 8.8 .8 up to 11.1 .1 in compression ratio. So they're going to need different ignition timing for these engines. Um, and as well as that, each different um, camshaft profile that we have mapped for is going to need different ignition timing as well. Um, because, you know, with aggressive cams, you need to um, dial out parts of it with ignition timing to make it actually drivable and not, not really lurchy. Um, so, um, yes, we needed a way to do it so that we didn't have to create you know, 400 different maps. Um, now, I'll explain how the grown-ups do it, grown-ups being the OEMs. Um, they have as their load axis for the ignition timing uh, an air mass um, per stroke, or they say per cylinder, but it's per stroke per cylinder. Um, and so the more air mass you have per cylinder, the less ignition timing you have. Now, the reason for that is that what we're trying to correct for is the pressure of the air um, before we set fire to it in the cylinder. And the reason why we need to correct for that is because when the air molecules are closer together, they um, the flame travels more quickly from, um, from one to the next and, and it propagates more quickly between the cylinders. So to get the peak um, pressure at the same time, um, you actually need to set fire to it later if the pressure is higher. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to try and draw this. Um, um, if you imagine you've got your piston here at the bottom and it goes up to the top there and you've got you know, the clearance volume here and you've got your swept volume here. I'll just call that the cylinder volume. Um, then what we really care about is what's the pressure at the top here um, because that determines how fast the flame moves um, through the combustion chamber um, and therefore what your uh, ignition timing needs to be to get the pressure to happen at the right time. Um, when I say the pressure happening at the right time, um, if you did um, thermodynamics at university, um, you'd probably remember this is a PV diagram. So there's pressure on one axis, volume on the other. The bottom of the compression stroke, we've got the maximum volume, and we've just got you know, atmospheric sort of pressure. Um, then during the compression stroke, the volume decreases, the pressure increases, because you're compressing it. And then at the top here, we set fire to it, and the pressure increases because it's on fire. Um, and then during the power stroke, um, the volume increases, the pressure produces. Then when the exhaust valves open, um, the exhaust pressure goes out, and the cycle starts again. Um, so the area in there is the work that's done um, through a single cycle. This is called the Otto cycle. Um, and in practice, the burning doesn't happen instantaneously, so you need to start it earlier so that by the time it finishes, you've got the maximum area in there. Because if you start at TDC, it'll just sort of flop over like that. You don't get the pressure. Or when you get the pressure pulse or pressure spike, um, the piston's already on its way downwards. So um, you make less work because you've lost that air of the, of the triangle map. Well, uh, you, you know what I mean. So what we really care about is what is the, um, um, the pressure in the top of the cylinder here um, at the end of the compression stroke. Call that P1 and that P2. 
Um, and this is why the um, OEMs use air mass um, as their metric because the air mass tells you what the pressure is at the beginning here. So if you're at, um, if you're on vacuum, for example, and your P1 is actually lower here, then you're only going to end up about here. Um, and because the air will travel, or the flame will travel more slowly through the combustion chamber, you need to set part of it a lot earlier. So I'll have, you know, 30, 40 degrees um, on vacuum and maybe 20 um, degrees at, um, um, at wide open throttle. Um, all right, hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, the different um, things that you would normally take into account when considering ignition timing. One of them is MAP. Why do we care about MAP? Because that tells you the pressure at the beginning of the cycle. Sort of. You have to include the volumetric efficiency as well because that tells you how much of the manifold pressure actually gets into, um, into the cylinder. Um, if your MAP's 100 kPa but your V is only 50%, um, then you know, not all of your manifold pressure is getting into the engine, um, which is why the V is lower, which, which means that um, you know, in an area where the cam isn't working properly because the VE is low, you need more ignition timing there. And we also know that at peak torque, you need less ignition timing. Same thing, right? It's because of the VE. Um, now, another thing that we want to not be sensitive to is engine capacity. Now, why do I bring this up? It's because the OEMs use grams per cylinder um, and that means that if you have an engine that's double the capacity, then that value is going to be twice as high. Right? It's like tuning in milliseconds. Bad. Don't want to do that. We want to be able to use the same map, whether it's a 4.8 litre engine or a 7 litre engine, if everything else is equal. Um, and the other thing that we have to consider, which is not considered by the OEMs, is the compression ratio. And it's because if you've got a um, lower compression ratio and you maybe go down to that volume instead of that volume, then your, your compression pressure is going to be lower. So we need to consider that as well. Um, the way that you would do it as a tuner, if you were tuning an engine as a one-off, is you would um, tune your fuel first of all, um, and then you would tune your ignition timing against MAP. Now, you've already got your VE dialed in, so that's no longer a variable. And because you're not building the engine, the compression ratio is no longer a variable either. Um, you would expect that if you pull the engine apart, change the pistons and put it back together, um, that you would need to retune the ignition map and the fuel map. So for, a, for an individual tuner tuning an individual engine for an individual, um, that's not a problem. But um, if you're trying to make a wizard that can create um, uh, an ignition map for 35 different engines, and also the fact that people might modify them as well, put in aftermarket pistons and things like that, um, then we need something that's a bit more um, robust against changes. <clears throat> so what we need to calculate is what this compression pressure is here. Um, and then we use that as our ignition map axis and then everything's sweet. Um, I can go into the maths of how the ECU does that if anyone's curious. But basically this P1 here is basically a map times the VE. So if your V is only 50% efficient, and you've got 100 kPa manifold pressure, then you'll only get 50 kPa into the cylinder. Um, so the rest of it will be filled up with exhaust and other stuff like that that's not very useful. Um, or just the pressure will be lower because it's sucking it in. Um, so when you go from this pressure to this pressure, the ratio of the pressures is P2 equals P1 times the compression ratio to the power of gamma where gamma is a constant for air, it's 1.4. Um, I don't want to get into why. Um, but what it basically means is that if you're tuning your ignition map, then you end, it's basically still a map-based tune, except you've got a slight compensation here for the volum volumetric efficiency, um, and you've got the correction for compression ratio. So I'll just um, um, share the screen again. Um, um, so you can see what it looks like. So in here we just have, um, it's still a pressure axis, um, um, but the numbers are different, and the numbers are going to be different depending on your compression ratio. So the easiest way to tune it is you just do a trace view, 
um, by pressing T. As you do a power run, then you can see which cells it's visiting and then you know you can change them. Um, that's the easiest way. Um, if you want to switch it over to map, then all you need to do is change that to map. And then you need to rescale um, your access points there. And then bring the numbers across as well. So um, that's why that's there. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. Thank you.